By the time I finish this sentence, six million kilograms of resources such as gold, copper, aluminum, water, and coal will have been extracted from the face of the earth. That is the same weight as 100,000 people that were stripping away from the soils of our planet every few seconds. You see, our society is shaped in such a way that most of these resources are absolutely necessary for us to survive. Yet an average mining worker in a third world country is exposed to lethal toxins like sulfuric acid for hours every single day while only making a couple dollars. Equally as detrimental is the impact that our resource extraction methods have on the environment. From causing severe lack of biodiversity to massive pollution of cities and water bodies, and at the bottom of it all, resource depletion, we are not sustainable and this must change. So what if I told you that perhaps there is a solution that allows us to continue development at the rate we do today without having any ecological or ethical detriments? Today, I want to present to you a trillion dollar idea, what I believe to be the golden ticket for the survival and enhancement of our species. The secret lies in the depth of outer space. Asteroids, the treasure of the cosmos. You see, asteroids are a collection of rock and mineral woven between planets and stars. And these space rocks can be made of a variety of materials like common metals such as zinc, nickel, and copper, or rare earth metals like silver, platinum, and gold, or even compounds like water and ammonia. And they are all around us. The ones that orbit the Earth we fittingly call near-Earth asteroids, and there's billions more in the depth of outer space. And now the thing with these asteroids is that their value is mind-bogglingly huge. The most valuable asteroids known to us to this day is worth 15 quintillion dollars. I'm almost certain that none of us here can even picture that amount because that's 200,000 times our global GDP. And that's just one asteroid. So what if, and bear with me here, we could reach out into the space between these stars and handpick resources from asteroids and bring them back to Earth. Just the ones we need, minimal pollution and certainly no ecological damage. And you might be wondering, well, when we know of such a lucrative avenue, why aren't we already harvesting these resources? Well, that's what I thought four years ago when I was presented with an opportunity to explore any topic of interest for a science fair project. And with a partner, I chose to delve into outer space, figuratively, of course. I remember presenting a black poster board to a triad of judges about the death of black holes and having done just a couple days worth of research, I came up with this nonsensical theory explaining why black holes die. But man, was I proud. I felt like I'd broken some fifth wall of science and was ready to receive my Nobel Prize any day now. Spoiler alert, that did not happen. In reality, I got some praise by amused yet confused judges. But more importantly, it instilled within me an everlasting love for science and astronomy that I cherish to this day. And what had begun as a matter of intrigue brought to me the realization that the solution to some of the most dire problems on Earth lies in the power of ingenuity and innovation. And we must venture out into the cosmos as the next step of our human civilization. So over the next couple years, I worked with my best friend and partner in research, Cheryl Chen, to research the plausibility of asteroid mining. And the result was a prototype for an autonomous spacecraft that mines asteroid for commercial benefit. I am so proud to present to you today Sparrow. Sparrow is a fairly large spacecraft at the size of about four football fields. It will be built at an altitude of 20,000 kilometers in the middle Earth orbit where gravity is significantly lower than on the surface of the Earth. This would result in less energy and fuel for production of the spacecraft because sustainability was one of the central 
goals of Sparrow. Once it's built, Sparrow will have five main components, the detection module, the landing tethers, the processing module, the extraction module, and a storage facility. The first goal of Sparrow will be to determine what the perfect asteroid is for it to mine. It does so in a couple phases. Phase one is simply distinguishing asteroids from other celestial bodies, whether that be a piece of space debris, a planet, a meteor, etc. So, it does so by evaluating the albedo of the objects around it. Albedo is the measure of reflectivity. For example, stars have a relatively high albedo since they're able to reflect light, whereas rocky planets have a lower albedo. Asteroids similarly have a range of albedo depending on what type of asteroid they are. When Sparrow emits light through its detection module, it receives certain amount of it back and it can use that to calculate the albedo of the objects around it and then classify it as whether it's an asteroid or anything else and also what type of asteroid it is, whether it's carbonaceous, silicaceous, or metallic. Phase two will be determining the exact composition of the asteroids. To do so, it will emit infrared radiation and depending on how the radiation reacts with the chemical bonds of the asteroids elements, it will get a certain value. And using infrared spectroscopy, it will be able to determine the exact composition and the most abundant materials of the asteroid. And phase three will be analyzing which of the asteroids that it's detected and analyzed is the most efficient based on values such as its composition, its albedo, its velocity, orbit, mass, etc. So once it's decided on the one asteroid to mine, it will then need to land on it. Now, asteroids aren't just stationary objects in space, they're actually floating at a very high speed of about 20 kilometers per second. Either Sparrow must be very precise in its landing, or it could emit a large boulder-like object to deter and slow down the motion. Either way, once it lands on it, it must also tether onto it very tightly because asteroids in itself don't have a gravitational field because they're not massive at all. Its landing tethers are made of thousands of small tiny strands that will maximize the contact points between each tether and the surface of the asteroids to make sure that the grip is optimal. And once Sparrow has captured and landed on an asteroid, it must then mine it. And this is my favorite part because it's very similar to mining on Earth. Because like I mentioned, the composition of asteroids can be very similar to the composition of Earth. So the mining techniques will be similar except modified due to no gravity and zero atmosphere. Then these mined materials will be processed in the processing tori. These tori will be spinning to create artificial gravity through centrifugal forces, which makes these processes and techniques easier. And finally, they will be stored in the storage facility, ready to be shipped back to Earth to be used. Today, most rockets use water as a fuel and propellant. So in theory, Sparrow should be able to take water out of these asteroids and recharge itself and work indefinitely. Where does all of this technology finally bring us? Imagine this, 50 years from now, we have an interplanetary network of resources. We might still inhabit the Earth, but we have access to the treasures of the world that we can tap into at any given moment. Your house is built from the iron rods coming all the way from the Antares asteroid near Mars. Your phone will be charged through the indium and palladium cells coming from the 1982BF asteroid. And your clothes will really just be reconstructed hydrogen and carbon molecules from all the edge of the universe from the series asteroid. Space missions will be more frequent and accessible because now rockets won't have to worry about carrying thousands of tons of fuel because they can simply get it from their gas station asteroids. Back on Earth, ecosystems will start to replenish and the now endangered species will become more populous and start thriving. 
There will be running water in the currently deprived parts of the world being sourced from millions of kilometers away. And labor laws will become more equitable because no one part of the population is being exploited for their natural resources. The overall quality of life will increase. And this is the future of innovation and ingenuity. Sparrow is Latin for hope, because ultimately that's what it brings to our civilization. Hope for the long-term survival of human race. Hope that generations after us will be able to enjoy the wonders of the Grand Canyon or the complex anatomy of octopuses. Hope that humanity will expand beyond its terrestrial confines. Because it's through history that we learn that it's through exploration and through innovation we solve some of our most dire problems. And through this curiosity, we develop technologies beyond our wildest dreams, which lay a foundation to the future of our civilization. When I first started researching this, I could not have possibly imagined presenting my research at national and international conferences or that it would bring me some of my greatest discoveries and best friendships. To everyone in the audience, I want you to think about that one idea that you always have in the back of your mind that you know will change the world, because I know we all have one, but only a few of us will ever act on it. And I implore you to realize its and your potential. I'd like to leave you with a quote by Harriet Tubman. Every dream begins with a dreamer. Know that you have within you the strength, the passion, and the patience to reach for the stars and change the world. Thank you.